I came up and was introduced to the world in a sort of very unique time of music where it was, you know, the pop explosion of you had your boy bands and you had your, you know, uh, teen little starlets. And there were a few of us that came out of um, a, a TV show called The Mickey Mouse Club, where I guess that was sort of a, a little bit of a training camp. The casting agent was genius for that, obviously. <laughs> you got Justin and Brittany and me and Ryan Gosling and, you know, these amazing talents that have, that have come out of that and have become very successful. But it, it was a very interesting time for me though because I was so in love and interested in in singing uh, soul music and I would I would intertwine that with everything that I could do uh, that I was allowed to do it was very <laughs> I was very kept under a tight leash I couldn't I was told not to ad-lib too much I was told not to do runs or slides I, I felt extremely confined um, thankful for the opportunity of course The ultimate turning point uh, would be landing my record deal. I mean, that's where everything changed. Uh, landing my record deal at the same time as I got, uh, came hand in hand with um, a song that I had on the Mulan soundtrack called Reflection. And that was the very first thing I, was reco I had recorded. And making my first record was an interesting journey. I learned a lot about the business. Um, a lot about myself, what I liked, what I didn't like, and how I wanted it to be better in the future. Um, so that was the real turning point. And then once success happens, hopefully, <laughs> after your record is released, that's when the real journey begins. There are a lot of people out there that um, make records and have success, but maintaining that success is also another step. Uh, in order to have a career in this business, you gotta be ready to work. It's work, it's hard. You gotta really love what you're doing. Singing, making music, being around creativity. Just love it because it's going to be work and it's grueling. So without the passion and the drive and the commitment and the dream behind it, you know, it's, it's not even worth it. My first record was honestly my most commercially successful record at that time. It was it was it was it was huge and yet I was so unfortunately I was I was unhappy because I felt like I wasn't being honest with with myself and I and I felt a little boxed up and I felt caged and I felt you know I didn't didn't feel real to me, it, 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 you know, and, and, and I, was, I was grateful for, for the success and the accolades and things like that. But over the years, um, thank God for that first record of that, you know, you play the game and you put your foot in the door. Uh, you know, I was able to then go on to making music that I truly did feel resonated with me and spoke my truths. And that's where Stripped, the title came from even though at the time, sometimes it might have been seen as a sexual connotation because my first single, I mean, talk about wanting to break free of that box and be like, I'm going to be me no matter what. And to me at that time, you know, you're 21, you feel rambunctious and empowered. And, and, and to me, sexuality has always been a part of my personal expression as a female, you know, growing up and seeing my mom rely on the man to be the provider, to be the caretaker, and she almost felt trapped. And I, that's part of why freedom is so important to me because I made up my mind I would never rely on a man when I grow up to, to support me, to, you know, enable me to do anything because I want to have that power. I want to take control of that. And I think sometimes sexuality is one of those things that's a double standard in society. And so it was really fun for me to explore that and say, hey, I'm, I, there's nothing wrong with my body and me being comfortable. And this is also just a matter of my own personal freedom. So you had dirty, you had stripped, you had been something that flipped it all together and you had beautiful, which was vulnerable, yet so strong. I think strength speaks volumes when you can admit weakness or insecurities. Fighter being another one where you just, you know, you're, 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 you're thanking those people in your life that made things so difficult for you. 
uh, because it made you who you are. It made you um, stand up taller and, and fight for your truth and, and who you are. And, you know, thank God, because out of it comes growth. And all of these things were, were notebooks and poems and lyrics and diary entries that I just wrote throughout, you know, my, my, my first record and going on tour and being all over the place and being pulled in a thousand different directions. And, um, and it blossomed into Stripped. And so that was, that was a really important, interesting, controversial time for me, but so necessary. And I look back and I'm so happy I had the balls to do it because it was fun. <laughs> The lessons that I really did learn were probably the most, you know, um, cutting hardships that happened, you know, from, from those moments, from, you know, being in school and, and um, having a, a, you know, a hard time being given to me by the other kids or, you know, just weirdness and, and criticisms or, or, or jealousies and things like that, which can make, you know, such, such, such nasty things come about, and, you know, um, lessen your confidence. Those are the things that actually ended up giving me strength and um, inspiration for certain songs that I wrote, Fighter, and even feeling beautiful the way that I do um, so intensely, you know, uh, and, and, and being able to then relay that message to other people that, that might need to hear that too, who might be having a hard time. That, that to me is, is the end-all, be-all winning goal, is to be able to share what I love to do and inspire others to hopefully do the same and feel comfortable in their skin. That's why I, I kind of am interested in also uh, always taking, you know, young talent under my wing because I did grow up that way where, you know, you did feel bullied or, or outcasted or, or, or different because you were interested in art or creativity or were more introverted in, in, in certain aspects and ways. So I always, you know, I always kind of have a soft spot for the underdogs and, and the people out there who kind of, you know, feel uh, a little alone sometimes. And so sometimes that's where my true inspiration comes from because I, I, I want to be that voice for them. And hopefully they'll find comfort in my message. For me, it's really hard, you know, what advice were you given going into this business? Because I was almost blindsided in a lot of ways, and I, and I didn't really have a lot of guidance around me. I kind of have been envious at times growing up in this business, looking at uh, sort of, you know, other, other artists who come from such um, a close-knit family or, or, or you know, the... the the parents and whatnot are so involved in the career and they're, they're on the road with them and they're, you know, even though that probably is a little bit difficult to swallow sometimes because it's like, okay, okay. But just to have that family unit with you as you're going through the whirlwind that happens when you are in it, if you make it in this business is huge. And I really navigated all of that on my own, which actually ended up putting up certain walls and protection guards and things like that, just because I was always so, I felt, you know, pushed, 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 you know, do this, do that, do that, you know, like, and pulled in so many different directions at such a young age without sort of that, the, the guardian and the policeman that was like, no, she, she needs a minute, you know, like, so that's probably why now I become so, okay, guys, literally give me a second, you know, you have to sometimes say that or else you're going to get bombarded with just so many people coming at you, asking, wanting, pushing, uh, pulling you in so many, dire so many different directions. So that's why I always say center yourself and be your own navigation. I'm a Sagittarius and I, I'm not a big, I'm not big on, you know, setting and making and committing to every single plan <laughs> in the calendar and in the schedule. Uh, you know, may maybe because I was also given a schedule since I was such a little girl, I had to be on time for this and that and the other thing. So it's just like, ah, let me breathe. Give me some room, you know, some space. So, you know, for me, I, um, I like to go with the flow. I love to be open to what the universe 
has in store for me, be open to listening to the signs, feeling my instinct, and just, you know, I'm, I'm constantly on the journey and the path of growth. When I stop growing, then I'll probably be dead because <laughs> I think, you know, the fascination and the want to learn and the need to grow um, should always stay with you. There's always new adventures around the corner, places to go visit, places to explore, new cultures and things to take in to, um, to draw inspiration from, new people. Um, you know, I'm constantly taking up uh, new things and, and trying to think outside the box here and there. And, you know, sometimes life throws curveballs and you get set back, but it's all about getting back up and getting back in the game and, you know, um, exploring what's new. So do I know what's in the future five, 10 years from now? I have no idea, but I like it that way. All I do, all I can do is focus on the here and now, being happy is ultimately everything. And, um, and I never wanna stop. I, I, I will never be happy meeting a goal and saying, okay, I reached my goal, that's it, I'm done. Never. I, I will always have that passion and that drive and that fire inside me to continue on, to grow, to learn more, to be a better artist, a different artist. How can I reinvent myself? It's all such a, a beautiful process and I'm constantly open to it.